So one of the problems that often confronts us when using formulas is choosing from a list of available formulas which one we want. How do we go about it? Well, the very first thing we need to do is first we need to make sure that we understand which formula or formulas apply to our situation. So, for example, we saw the example of area on the previous video. The area of a rectangle is length times width. And the rectangle in question might look something like this. One side is the width, the other side is the length. The area of a shape called a parallelogram, in which the sides are still parallel, but maybe not at right angles to each other, is base times height, where the base is the length of one of the sides, and then the height is the distance between the sides, but at a right angle to the base. The area of a triangle is half of the base times the height, where again the base is one of the sides, and then the height is the distance between that side and the opposite corner measured at a right angle. So if you want to choose which area formula to use, you need to ask, what kind of shape is this whose area I'm trying to find? Okay, so that works really well if there's only one formula that applies to your situation. But what if more than one formula applies in your situation. Let me give you an example. If we have an object moving at a constant speed, there are two different formulas that could apply. Here, x is the current location of the object, x0 is its starting position, d is the distance it's traveled, r is its speed, and t is the time for which it's traveled. Notice that these are two different formulas that might apply. And they might apply in different situations. So for example, if you have the story, if you know that a bus starts off 25 miles away and driving away at 60 miles per hour, you want to use this formula because you know a starting position and you want to know an ending position. So you would say the ending position is the starting position plus the rate times the time, which would work out to 25 plus 60 times 2 is 145. So how far away will it be in two hours? 145 miles. On the other hand, if you have the question, Jason runs at seven miles per hour for two hours and you want to know how far he runs, well in this problem you aren't interested in his actual locations. You're just interested in the distance that he travels. So in this situation, you would say distance is his rate, 7 miles per hour, times 2 hours is 14. So in this case, he runs 14 miles. How did we decide which formula to use? To decide which formula to use, we just looked at what the variables in each one represent and decided which one we were interested in. So in the first story, we were interested in the first formula because we were interested in a starting and final position. In the second story, we decided we wanted to use the second formula because we were just interested in the distance.